Hello again, Math Ninja here. So today I'm teaching from different classroom uh, in another country, and I'll be teaching Cauchy STEM. The reason why I want to teach Cauchy STEM, different from schedule, is because one of my kids uses the proof of a very difficult theorem. He proved that the relatively prime group RP is a cyclic group when P is prime. Very beautiful there. Good job, Julian. So, what is Cauchy's theorem? Cauchy's theorem is partial converse to Lagrange's theorem. Lagrange's theorem say, so if any element, uh, any subgroup of the bigger group, or any element of the group, the order of that element has to divide the order of the group. So, converse, we want to say the elements, we want to say what elements do we know? must be in the group that divides the order, given that we know its order, and that divides G, the order of G. So, for example, so the, what Cauchy's theorem says is, if the element has a prime order, so, okay, so if uh, for all prime divisors of the order of the group, the group must have an element that has that order with that prime number. So for example, let's say we have even a group of even order, right? Let's say 10. Then it must have a, a group, then it must have an element of order 2. Likewise, since 5 divides 10, it must have an element of order 10. This is incredible because you can work abstractly. You, it says there is existence of an element that has this property. Beautiful. Existence proofs always difficult, especially since you cannot, sometimes you cannot construct them. But you know they exist. Very nice. I like it. So let's write it out. Cauchy step. Cauchy step. So the theorem says let order of G equal n. Then, then if P divides order of G, which is not. P divides order G, then and P is prime, then there exists, then there exists an element X and G such that order of x equals p. Beautiful. So, for example, a corollary would be if a group is even, then it has a must have an element of order 2. Simple. It's not even really a simple. Uh, so, let's say, for example, a big corollary, corollary would be uh, let's see. Um, there's a lot of them. Big one was one through four. RP is a secret group, but so this is not an easy theorem to prove. Why? Because the machinery it talks about orbits and stabilizers and actions. We're not going to go into that until chapter 17. But for now, and the proof itself that they give me is not a very pretty. But we'll work through it. This is one of the few times I will actually use the book. Because there's lots of um, calculation, precise calculation by industries. So until we get to the actual letters, I will not use the book. But when I get there, I'll use it. Okay. So approved. Okay. So let x equal the set of all uh, x1, uh, x2. So we're going to say strings. Xp, so strings of size p, where x1 times x2 times all the way up to xp is equal to e. Okay. So, a quick question How big is x? Very simple. Order of x, notice here, it's going to equal to g to the p minus 1 because. Well, one, because, okay, x1 
one, x two, x p equals e implied is given only if x one up to x p minus one equals x p. This can be inverted equals x p. So these p minus one elements are free. You can have them be any. This one has p possibility, g order g possibilities, order g possibilities. P minus one of them, and that determines x p. So therefore, order of x equals order of g raised to p minus one. Very good. Okay, this will be important fact. So now, and by the way, remember p divides order of g. So next part is. Okay, I'm going to define an equivalence relation. So, define R. Um, okay, define x. Then the y. Even only if x is a cyclic permutation. So what does it mean to be a cyclic permutation of y? Well, yeah. For example, if x one, let's say, either e, x one x, let's say we have x one up to x p minus x up to x p, x one x two up to x p is equal to x. Two up to x three up to x p minus four up to x two yeah x p x p minus one up to x p and x one is equal to or x two to this x three x four up to x p minus one. So we say if it's if we can just ship it, but the sequence is preserved for a separate cyclic permutation, and we define an equivalent solution of this. Good. We're going to need this fact. So I'm going to erase just this part. By the way, it is an equivalent solution, huh? and it's maintaining on x in a quick group. For a quick example, I can prove it is. So we know x one. Up to we know it's between x because we know x one times x two is it x k? It's k plus one. Let's see what example. X one but x two we know this is equal to x p equals e. Let's consider in a shift. Simply multiply the rest of the remaining here and then invert that. Xk, yeah, okay, oh, xk plus 1, dot dot dot, xp plus x1, x2, xk minus 1. Uh, so we want to continue the rest. Xk, so we have this region. We want to we add these. Remember, we always multiply by 1. So xp gets rid of them, xp minus 1. 